I figured it out with the help of Twitch chat and my Discord. Now everybody can beat the Scarab. Let's go. Not only do we have a new computer, we got a new stream overlay, we got a new YouTube overlay, we got the new microphone set up, and hopefully everything is all taken care of. Thank you so much to everybody helping me out getting this all set up. I'm MTG Jedi, and this video is gonna change everything, guys. Everything. I can't even tell you how many questions I've gotten about this boss right here the scarab boss he is such a beating people have complained and been frustrated about this boss since the doom tower was first released you may be one of them if you clicked on this video and rightly so because he is very champion intensive even on the normal side, which for an account of my level is not that challenging for me, I still have to include a lot of turn meter, um, turn meter manipulation in order to be successful. And if we come over to the hard side, if we come over to the hard side, um, where are we at? If we come over to the hard side, you can see a full team of turn meter manipulators. The whole team is dedicated to controlling the turn meter. Okay, you have High Katoon, who increases your speed, puts decreased speed, and reduces the turn meter. You have Allure, whose only job is to A1 your team to victory to control the turn meter. Armager, A1, 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 do some damage. Vizix, great by the way. I'll have a video coming out on her hopefully tomorrow or the next day. She is so good, but she also has that Armager Allure type of A1. And then you have a Shield Champion. I've been using Lodric because his AI is not broken with the shields. Miscreated Monster has not been working well lately. But we all know this strategy, but not all of us have these champions, right? We, we all get, um, like, three of them, but you might not have a fourth one, right? And I don't think a second armager is enough. But regardless, this requires a full team of specific champions. And what is your other option? Your other option would be to remove all of these people and then build one specific champion Virgis, or apparently the new elemental guy from Doom Tower Hard, but if you can get the, the new elemental guy, then you already have a team for this. So I don't even count him, right? You have to level Virgis up to 60, and he requires crazy gear, and then you have to have a weird team that kills itself. That helps you get through the wave, and then the boss kills them, so Virgis can solo it. And it takes like 30 minutes. But today... We have a brand new strategy, and it is going to be groundbreaking. So, here is the team that I beat floor 100 on the Scarab. I do have technically the best time in my clan. Um, but none of these champions control the turn meter. Zero. I'm going to tell you what the key is, but first, let me prove it to you so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. So, let's come in here and start this. I was worried for a second that I used all my silver keys because I actually I actually have been doing that. Um, so, let's take a look here. Getting through the waves with this team is not difficult. Um, I would say that the gear is probably relatable if you have a mid or late game account like if you're doing the hard doom tower you have these champions then i think the gear is pretty reasonable okay 
Um, if you're watching this video and you're on the normal side, you can take this level of gear and tone it down a lot and you'll still be able to beat the normal side, okay? I don't even think you'll need all five of these champions on the normal side and we will talk about that in another minute here. Um, but on this run, I've basically, number one, it's never failed. I've run it a bunch. Number two, I've never seen it really be in danger. The closest thing to in danger I've ever seen is like Aox at, at half health, you know, and then, then they'll heal back up. So, um, this team uh, took a lot of working. It took a lot of working. And who do I need to give shout outs to? Uh, I need to give shout outs to my dude, Crook who leads the Claw Clan group of clans. He doesn't like Clan Cluster. So he leads the Clans of the Claw or something. I forget exactly how you say it, Crook. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, he was very influential in helping me start this thought process about the Scarab boss here. And number two, um, my new friend Rip Rad, who recently joined... Uh, our Twitch channel and uh, helping out with some sweet strategies. A fellow brewer uh, like myself, um, he, uh, it was actually his idea to include Iron Brago in the team. And that was the last missing piece that I needed in order to make this team successful. So um, before I talk about the specifics of this team, I really want to tell you that this is just scratching the surface. There are so many potential champions that you can use in here. It's crazy. This is not the only comp that will work with this strategy. It's just the first one that we found that will make it work. Similar to Clan Boss, when we started finding these unkillable teams, uh, and by we, I don't mean me. <laughs> that is not my specialty, Clan Boss speed tuning. Uh, once I have the the speeds i'm very good at building those teams but i'm not good at finding those speeds anyway uh once uh similar to that when we first started finding all of those unkillable teams uh this is just the first of many possibilities for this boss and this is going to be a strategy that's accessible to everyone everyone regardless of your account or your champions this strategy is going to work okay now, when you're thinking about potential champions here, number one, you're going to want healers, okay? Number two, you are going to want somebody to do damage. And number three, the gear is what's important. The gear is what's important, okay? So you do need to fill the role with healers. You do need to fill the role with at least one damage dealer. Stagnite might be one of the champions that is necessary, though. He does all the things that we need. He puts the decreased speed on. He puts the um, decreased attack on, which is very helpful. He puts the decreased defense on, which, believe it or not, does help. But this against this boss, you'll see the lowest numbers you've ever seen. 31 damage. When have you ever seen that in the game? No. Because the Scarab has this um, crazy high defense slash... You know boss ability where he basically takes no damage thanks to his shield i think it's like a double defense calculation but i don't know for certain so whenever you're choosing your champions to fill those roles they also have to not put up a lot of buffs okay i can tell you i tried Krela, that was bad i tried grush that was real bad um, and your healers cannot put up continuous heal. Because if Borgoth, the Scarab King, steals a continuous heal, he will bump up like 50% in health. It's absurd. I was, um, I don't know, let's see. I had him all the way down here to like a quarter health. He stole two continuous heals and popped all the way back up past 50%. It was crazy. And then I was like, okay, well, I can't use Grush, but... Uh, Grush seemed like he was an, a great champion. One possible replacement for Stagnite would be Deacon, because he does the increased speed, and he does Leech, and he does decreased defense. So I think that could be a big, uh, a, a good fit as well. Um, 
some tips and tricks, okay? This comp, originally, I did it without almost anyone having masteries. And um, I don't even think that you need masteries on any champion. It'll just be a long clear time, okay? Again, what's important is the gear, and I'm going to go over that after the run. Um, my previous clear times have been around 8 minutes, so... This seems a lot slower. I'm uncertain as to why, unless I removed a piece of gear. Maybe Iron Brago's gloves, I've been sharing them. Interesting. I'm gonna let it run, but it might be another six minutes. Should we back out and try again? I mean, I'm pretty sure if we beat this without his gloves, then it will be just evidence of the fact of how good this strategy is. And then I can come back in and show it to you with a faster clear time as well. All right, so let's just go ahead and let it go. I'm pretty sure Iron Brago is missing 80% crit damage gloves <laughs> because I've been sharing them with my Seer. Seer um, had the gloves that would perfectly fit with the rest of Iron Brago's gear. I have him built in 100% crit rate and like 200% crit damage or something. Um, but like, I don't think he has his gloves on right now because normally we would be finishing this up. Okay, so um, the fact is, you can beat this without masteries and apparently without people fully geared because it's the it's the strategy that's successful here. Okay, it's the strategy that's successful, and you'll notice that I don't have a dedicated shield champion. That's on purpose. Okay, you'll notice we're letting the scarab take turns. That's on purpose. Okay, and uh, poison or HP burn is very doable as well the poisons actually do really good damage against him um i also uh beat this with drexthar in the place of aox so if you have him built that will totally work as well uh and i think that aox is better um my time was better with him and also Aox did more damage, and also Aox had the ability to extend the debuffs. But we'll go over all the champions as in their kits as well um, after this, okay? But I will say the Drexstar, he didn't change too much. He did not change too much. So <laughs> if we beat this like this, then I'm just going to put random gloves on Iron Brago. Because I don't think I would have changed anyone else. But it's hard to say. Now, a random tidbit here as we're finishing up the run. I actually, the way the Scarab boss looks, he's my favorite looking boss. And when they were um, when they were promoting these new bosses, I was just like super pumped to be able to fight against him. Because I think he looks super cool. So, today, we're showcasing a strategy that anyone can do on any account. As long as you have some of these champions, similar champions, and the appropriate gear. Okay. Now, I'm pretty sure the majority of our damage here is going to come from poison because we haven't even broken the shield yet. Okay. We haven't even broke. We might beat him without breaking the shield, which would be the first time I've ever done that. I don't know about you guys, but. If you're enjoying this video, let me know in the comments and tell me what your experience has been like against this boss. Has it been a good experience or a bad experience? We beat him without getting the shield. Okay, level 100 on the hard side of the Doom Tower, complete. Okay, and we were a little bit over a minute. Um, let's look at the champions recently used. Iron Brago, missing gloves. Oh, it was Tormund's gloves. Okay. Crit damage. Do I have one that is just sitting here? Yeah, this will be fine. It's not going to be perfect, but we beat it without them. So let's go ahead and equip it. All right, so we have these five champions. Okay. Um, let's go ahead over their skills and talk about why they're important. All right. 
Iron Brago is important because of his passive, all right? But also, he's important because um, he places a decrease attack. He uh, pairs well with Stagnite because, um, you know, I don't know that you really need these debuffs, but they are helpful. And you can see that I don't have him booked. I may actually do that to see if it speeds up the time. Um, I like this ability here, the increased defense, but honestly, when the AI fix comes out, I might turn it off, because I think it's more helpful for the boss than it is for my team, because when he steals it, increasing his defense is insane. And then his A1 decreases the duration of all buffs, so if, if he steals the increased defense, then we can lower the, the duration sometimes, okay? Um, but really the whole reason he's in here is because of his passive and, uh, his aura is really helpful as well. So he really does add a ton of defense, which adds survivability to your team. So as far as I know, he is necessary. Um, if you guys try this strategy and you find other teams, please come back and put comments on this video about what team you use to be successful here, what champions, and then you could be featured in a future episode. But either way, it will help me in helping other people with this, okay? Aox, again, his passive is probably the most important thing here. Increases the duration of two random debuffs on the attacker by one turn, occurs once per hit. So every time he gets hit, and sometimes the Scarab King gets more, more than one hit, then you're going to increase the duration of the debuffs, which is great. Okay, he also places decrease attack and decrease crit rate, so we should have decrease attack up the whole fight. That's important. This heal is very good because, number one, it goes up for each debuff on the target. Number two, it attacks them. And number three, it's a, it's a heal without the continuous heal buff. That's super important. I also love his A1. It's a small chance, um, but if I ended up getting masteries on him, we could increase that chance. Still doesn't have masteries because I didn't have time to run them. But as you can see, we don't need the masteries for this. There's very little that you need other than the gear. Um, but the poison, as you saw, is very helpful in damaging the boss. Like... Very helpful, okay. Uh, Vogoth, also very great champion. His first passive places a leech. You don't need to read the rest of this. It's not, it's not important. His second passive is a heal, okay. So you don't have to do anything. When you get attacked, you heal. Uh, over here, again, another champion that can place decrease attack. Um, but it's not going to be placed because he'll never have Provoke. So this ability is kind of pointless. Uh, we might turn that off with the AI fix as well. Just turn it off completely. And then here, uh, attacks one enemy three times, which I did put Masteries on him. So that triple hitter is relevant. Each hit has a 30% chance of increasing the duration of a random debuff. So we're doubling up on that ability with Aox and Vogoth to keep those debuffs up the whole fight. Stagnite, we all know and love. The increased accuracy, if you get resisted, you'll get that, but then sometimes he steals it. We have the AoE, decreased defense, decreased attack, and we have the decreased speed, which I find very useful. Also, he can do some damage for you. And then a Doom Tower All-Star, Vrask. Um, when he inflicts a critical hit, he heals all allies by 10% of his max HP. Uh, this ability, I'm going to turn it off as well with the AI. And then here, uh, we will just do his A1 every time. He'll attack them, fill his turn meter, and then uh, heal everyone. So he'll get more turns. All right, so... What is the absolute key to this strategy is these artifacts. The new Blood Shield accessories are 100% the key to victory. If I just click through all of my champions, uh, Aox has the amulet, Bogoth has the ring, Stagnite has the amulet, 
and Vrask has the amulet. Now, I will say, these are not good for these champions, except not even this one. This one is hilarious. You can see, this is the worst possible ring for Iron Brago. Attack does not benefit him in any way. And we have this, man, this could have been such the perfect ring overall, but in all honesty, the only thing that matters is the, uh, the special effect here, which you get a shield. It doesn't matter that it's 5%. It doesn't matter how big the shield is. That is unimportant. The fact is that you get the shield, so the Scarab King does not wreck you, okay? Um, but yeah, hilarious. I had to roll it to 16, and of course we got the quad roll. If you if you come join us on uh, Twitch, you can use the wrecked banner emotes. Same kind of thing, except the first time it was a banner instead of that. Uh, and then over here on him, this one is the most decent one. It has accuracy and defense, and it's still level 12. Um, actually, the level of the gear doesn't matter one bit, other than you need your champions to still be survivable. Over here, we have a ring that's not that bad, actually, but again, level 12. On Stagnite, we have a, a defense amulet, okay? And on Vrask, we have an attack amulet instead of crit damage. So, the specific... Um, the specific stats on these items is not important, but their effect is critical. Their effect is critical. So for this to work, you do need some people in destroy, but as we just saw with the poison damage, killing the scarab, maybe you don't need it in destroy, but it will lower your time considerably um, if, you, if you don't have someone in destroy. And I have two people in destroy for this comp. Um, here are his total stats. You need at least 3,000 defense on him, and I would say uh, somewhere around 40,000 health. We want everybody at or above 200 speed, and then again, I said the 100, 200. I put accuracy on him. I'm not sure if you actually need accuracy on him, so if you're having a hard time uh, getting to these stats, you can probably cut the accuracy out, and it'll still be fine. As I said before, he is not booked. And here are his masteries that I chose. I think the counterattack masteries are pretty important. Um, they're not necessary. I beat this without him being, uh, without masteries on him. So if you don't have masteries, it's fine. But everybody with War Master is, is pretty helpful. Uh, Aox does not have masteries. He does have all of his books, though, which I think that's pretty important. And the more I use him, the more impressed I've been. I have him in a toxic set, so he can also apply more poisons from his gear than just um, his ability. If you can't make it work in toxic, you don't need it. We beat it without him in toxic. Um, and then here are his total stats. Again, the health and the defense. This is just kind of numbers you want to try to stick to for everyone, I think. Uh, but he does need a solid amount of accuracy, above 300 if you're talking about 100 hard, okay? Uh, Vogoth, also in destroy um, uh, with some speed. Uh, I got him to be over 200. Again, very you're seeing very similar stats here. The defense actually a little bit lower, and the like crit rate, crit damage stats, not incredible because we need to keep that accuracy high as well. You don't need him in Destroy. We started off with him in a shield set. You know, just the random build that I had on my account. But the overall stats are what's important. Um, I do have him booked. I don't necessarily think that's 100% needed. But it is helpful on the A1. And then the Masteries, I do have Giant Slayer, which does help on damage. But again, you don't need the Masteries if you can't get them just yet. But all of this helps speed up your time. Next is Stagnite, which I've had booked for like since he first came out. And I also have Stagnite in Destroy as well. But again, not necessary. He started out in Relentless Gear. Um, but I have, you know, it was pretty cool. It worked out to 108%, but not necessary. Again, the 300. Oh, we, we kind of need to glyph that. I wonder if we have anywhere that doesn't have an accuracy. Here we go. 
Um, let's put a four and save those fives for the, the mission. Now that should put us over 300. Let's just double check that we didn't miss another glyph. We missed another glyph. Um, glyphs are super important. Make sure you're doing your faction wars because that's how you get to the numbers that you need here, guys. Okay, great. So now that will hopefully stop us from being resisted and getting that increased accuracy buff, but it might get placed because of some of your other champions if their accuracy is too low. But either way, again, same kind of stats, 45k HP, 2900 defense, uh, over 200 speed, over 300 accuracy, 108, 108, fun times, in destroy, and uh, masteries over here, typical kind of clan boss masteries. I, I kind of like this shield bearer if you are taking the support tree, but you really need the support tree for this ability here, the 5%, because... Technically, um, this is 95%, which is super annoying. But um, that will get you that will get you to a hundred, okay? And then last but not least, I would say this is the most end game type of a build that I have of all these champions. Number one, I have him in um, I have him in stalwart here for the other bosses, the Griffin, I think. It's either the Griffin or the Eternal Dragon, one of the two, uh, on the other rotation of the Doom Tower. And this is the same build, I believe, that I used for him. Um, 70k HP for this boss. I don't think it needs to be that high, but if you're interested in using him in more than one area, then yes. I also have Resistance built into his kit. That's not necessary for this boss in any way, um, but 100 and 100 at least is pretty important. Now, you'll notice that my crit damage has gone down a lot on some of these champions, too, because we have to use the amulet, okay? Now, how did we arrive at these five champions? Well, let me tell you. If you come in here to your gear and you hit equipped, you need to look for the champions that you have blood shield accessories with. Or not, rather, not the champions, but the factions, okay? So, the only factions I have blood shield accessories on are two orcs, dwarves, demon spawn, undead, ogren, banner lords, and lizardmen. So seven, seven factions with eight total uh, accessories. I think I sold some. That's a bad idea. Don't do it. Even if they seem bad, don't sell them. Same thing goes with the other ones as well. Um, let me see if I can find one. Yeah, the, uh, oh man, the reaction accessories, we all know how good those are, but this is a terrible one, double flats, and it's still on Candrophon, so, um, <laughs> don't sell these new accessories from Clan vs. Clan, they are crazy important. Every single champion on this team has to have a Blood Shield accessory for this strategy to work. Every single champion, okay? If one doesn't have it, they will die. And probably your whole team will fail because everybody has to have that shield. Instead of having a shield champion, what you're doing is you're giving yourself a shield. So every time you attack, you get the shield, and then it doesn't matter. He can just attack you. It's fine. You just need some healing and survivability. So what do you guys think of the new blood shield strategy? I'm so pumped about it. I think it's going to help out so many people on so many accounts. Please share this with your friends. Share this with your clan. Post it wherever you post stuff about raid. Um, and get people access to this video so they can learn this strategy as well. Um, I don't think I'm going to rerun this. It only ended up being like an extra minute without the gloves on Iron Brago. But that just shows you how easy this strategy is to achieve. You do need some decent gear to make this happen. And you do need some champions to choose from on your account. But this strategy should be very customizable for most people. Um, if you're on the normal side, you might be able to just throw the Blood Shield accessories on a bunch of different champions and make this team. Okay, but make sure they're not putting up a bunch of buffs. Like, you don't want him to get an increased speed or you don't want him to get a block debuffs like you don't want the scarab to be stealing the buffs 
So don't use champions that put up a lot of buffs. Okay, that's why we arrived at this team today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you want to see more awesome strategies like this, there will be a playlist of other awesome strategies at the end of the video. And uh, consider subscribing if, uh, if you like this content. Thank you so much for watching. I'm MTG Jedi, and I hope that your day is awesome and this strategy helps you on your account. See you later.